if this then, this is the fix for it, we're going to talk about the kettlebell swing hump from far across the room. Um, without Birkenstocks, people are probably performing this movement where they get up on their toes as they're doing multiple reps of kettlebell swing. So back room, we can call it the Humpty Hump. Maybe not front room, you're discussing that with coaches or you're not screaming out, hey, stop it with the Humpty Hump. Uh, or we're screaming out, stay on your heels. No, to be, to be completely honest, we're trying to ask that of people all the time. Stay on your heels as long as possible with the kettlebell swing. So if you see that happening all the time, the hump, where they're getting into uh, uh, and being on their toes way too often in the repetitive bending pattern, um, I got a couple things you can think about you can fix it, besides just screaming across the room to let them know that they're doing that. The first thing is that it's not their fault. So something to think about. The pattern of bending when it's done in repetition, especially with some kind of load over and over, is a very unnatural process. I'll just allow you to sit with that one for a bit, but they develop a strategy to keep the movement going with whatever is efficient. So you have to remember that when the hamstrings and the posterior chain, which is used for locomotion and motor across the room, we do that for lots and lots of reps, it should make sense that we stop doing it really effectively. So it's just a natural strategy for people to go on their toes and push through their quads in order to develop the pattern over and over. So you need to understand that first, that it's not their fault. It should be expected that people will move from this really fatiguing pattern to make it less fatiguing over time, and that's their strategy, okay? So just recognize that. So that's how you do a first fix, is you recognize that could be it. Second thing you can ask them to do is actually to what I'll call dampen bracing. So you wanna just basically ask them in every repetition just to relax a tiny bit. So they can still keep form and their best form possible, even if we're okay with them staying on their toes for a little while, and just ask them to back off on every little rep. So I describe it as dampening the bracing strategy. So slow down on every repetition and make each contraction a little less intensive, okay? And what that will result in doing is probably allowing them to have more focus and awareness of the movement if you need to shift them back to their heels. Third, and this could go against a lot of uh, positioning for this particular movement, because we all think of power and performance and hip extension and posterior chain when we talk about swinging a kettlebell or going through that movement. Um, but it's okay to fix this movement by asking for people to do more of a squat pattern. There I said it, you know, but it's okay. It's okay. Uh, so we think we have these guidelines and rules that it should be perfectly here and knee angle should be here and that's all taken from a performance or isolated hip extension mechanism um, idea. So there's no wrong, there's nothing wrong with asking people to still maintain whatever rigidity and position you want, but to ask them to do, move the swing into a more of a squat pattern. So they can go up and down with action as opposed to this action. Now that's, that could break a couple people's brains, but just think about what the outcome is. Well, I mean, what do you want to get, right? Do you want to keep good rigidity, good bracing, good repetition? Well, you may have to succumb to more knee bending and staying taller and going up and down. So that could be a better fix for it, as opposed to you sticking so tight to wanting this really packed posterior chain position, and it's not going to result in you know, endurance. I see some nodding heads out there, so the, the crew likes that one. So that's, that's probably the top of your list, okay? Last one, <clears throat> visualize alternating the energy source per rep. Sounds kind of nebulous, right? I just purposely said that because it sounds kind of cool, but you can use it with your friends and it, it can sound like you really know what you're talking about. But what I really mean is that every rep you do on the kettlebell swing, change your visualization as to where the energy comes from. So ask the person on one rep to drive through the ground to develop energy. The next rep, you're going to ask them to use their hips more in the energy. On the next rep, you're going to ask them to engage their lats and their grip more. So 
We cannot measure, measure that physiologically live, but what it does do, it allows this focus for the person on each rep and not change up the mechanics of what the movement looks like, but it allows them to create this almost like a diversion tactic away from what may be happening in the accumulation of fatigue. So you say, every, you know, if you can, once you get into these extended kettlebell swing sets and you're doing the Humpty Hump, I want you to think about this. Rep one, ground, rep two, hips, rep three, lats, and just keep repeating over and over. And most times they're gonna come back to you and be like, that was an unbelievable strategy, that's magic. And all you really did was allowed them to stay focused on that one position that's needed the whole time without getting into the, the Humpty Hump accumulation of fatigue. So if the Humpty Hump happens, this is a well-known term now for what you're gonna see out there. <laughs> if the Humpty Hump happens, um, recognize it's physiologically impossible to maintain posterior chain endurance, right? It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, so it's not their fault. Number two, dampen the bracing. Number three, turn it into a squat pattern. Or number four, visualize alternating energy sources.